once said, your skin is not a paper, so don't cut it. Your face isn't a mask, so don't cover it. Your size isn't a book, so don't judge it. And your life isn't a film, so don't end it. Every day we are faced uh, uh, with an enemy whose purpose in life is to tie us down from the pleasures of what the world has to offer. His goal is to separate us from the church, from our faith, and then also from our walk with Christ. But I'm here to tell you on today, young people, that if you reach out to God and make him a major player in your life, he will help you reach your potential and he will help you follow your dream. Amen. So if we are to reach our full potential, the first thing that we need to do is that we have to examine ourselves, church. And we have to ask ourselves a few questions. The first question is, are we satisfied with our Christian life uh, the way it is on today? The second thing is, what are your dreams? What are dreams? When you think of that word dream, what, 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 what comes to you? Well, dreams are goals and visions that fire your heart and saturate your soul with joy just from thinking about those particular dreams. Uh, they are those continuing visions on what you want your life to be at its highest level of fulfillment. It is what you want to do, how you want to do it, what kind of person you want to become during that process. See, what you have to understand, church, is that your dream did not originate with you, but it resides with you because God put it there. Go ahead. See, Go ahead. he is the source of your dream. See, a, a, when people dream without God, they find it very unsatisfying. Mm. Every person must come to Jesus for his or for her dream mm. in order for it to make sense. In fact, without Jesus, uh, you might follow a dream for, for uh, your life that God has never put in your heart. So not every dream from God uh, is, it, so every dream that you have may not be from God. Amen. There is a such thing as a godless dream. Well. But see, when your dream is in God's dream and you are a child of the most high, then that dream he has for you, that plan that he has for you is unstoppable. No matter who tries to destroy it, no matter who said that you will never amount to anything, no matter who said you will never be anything, that dream is for you if God has already planned it out. For you. So now you might ask yourself, how do I know which dreams in my heart is from God? Well, the first thing is, is that if it's bigger than you, then you know it's from God. Uh, if you're willing to give up everything for this particular dream, then you know it's from God. But most importantly, if it brings God the glory, or brings glory to God, then you know that it's primarily just for you and from God. So the first test that you can apply to your dream is ask yourself, is it too big for me to fulfill without God's help? Mm, well. See, if you can do it without his help, then you're not dreaming big enough. Come well. on. If it's much bigger than you, then you are on the right track. Because see, what you have to understand, church, is that the Bible promises us that all things are possible with God. So now, is your dream big enough? Does it go beyond you enough to qualify for God's help? Come on. See, your dream should be so big that it takes your breath away. Mm. It should be so big that it temporarily makes you weak in the knees. Mm. It should be so big that it makes you cry out to God for help and for guidance. Mm, yes. So how else do you know that this dream is from God? Well, you would know it's a God-given dream if you're willing to devote every ounce of energy and every minute of your days to it. See, a dream inspires devotion like the devotion of a parent for his or her child. Mm. See, you, you would give your very life just to see it grow to its full fulfillment. Mm. And finally, your dream should bring glory to God. The most horrible thing in life is to realize that you have wasted months, years, mm. decades following the wrong dream. See, church, that uh, uh, life is too precious to fitter away uh, by building on a crumbling foundation. See, many people lose their lives, and it's not just by dying, but it's by squandering their time. So you identify your dream. It fills all the criteria of a dream from God himself. So now how do you bring this dream to life? Well, the first thing you have to do is that you have to get some alone time with God. Come on now. See, one reason people never discover their dream or their purpose in life is because they never stop long enough to listen to what God is trying to tell them. Yep. 
See, I'm a history guy, so I like documentaries. And, and I seen this uh, documentary once where a pilot in World War II, uh, he became lost over the ocean and he called back to the command center and he says, I have no idea where I am or where I'm headed, but I'm making record time. And someone said that it's, ironic, it's an ironic habit of the human race that we double our speed when we've lost our way. Wow. So we have to get some alone time with God and we have to listen. And Psalms 46, 10, it, it confirms us. It says, be still and know that I am God. So in order for you to get a vision from God, you got to turn off the TV. In order for you to get a vision from God, you got to block some people out your lives, whether it's some family or some friends, because people will tell you anything to get you where they want to be. But you got to realize you're trying to get what God wants you to be. Amen. You got to get quiet and you got to let God talk to you. Uh, in Oregon, there's an Indian tribe. Uh, and what they used to do, they used to send young men out once they get to a certain age. And, and once these young men get to a certain age, uh, their instructions was, do not come back until you have a vision. Uh, those who got discouraged came back early. But those who stayed until they had a vision became leaders of the tribe. Don't y'all miss that. The next thing you have to do is that you have to review your gifts and review your talents. In Romans chapter 12 and verse number 6, the Bible says that we all have gifts. God gave you the gift uh, that you have. Uh, you didn't choose what gift uh, God wanted to give you. Understand that fulfillment comes when you use those gifts for him in service of your dream. Your gifts are the key to discovering God's, God's will in your life. God speaks to us through our desires. See, many Christians have come to think that their motives and their desires are corrupt and untrustworthy. But the Bible says that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away and all things become new in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. That includes our desires, church. The Bible says that you can have the mind of Christ within you. So what does it say about your desires? It says that your desires, when you become a new creature, have changed. Yeah. That's why God can say, I want you to give, I want to give you the desires of your heart. And then our one of our other notes is that you have to decide what's really important in life. Amen. Paul wrote that all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. First well. Corinthians 10, 23. Some things are not wrong, but they're just not necessary. Amen. <laughs> Some of us is honest. That, that's how we feel about church sometimes. It, it, it's not wrong with what we're doing. We just, okay, I'll leave that alone. No, Some of you feel like it may be a waste of time. So, so we may feel as if we may not have the time to pursue every dream. So we must choose what dream we want to spend our time on. See, successful people learn to eliminate non-essentials. Those things that won't matter 10 years from now, invest in your life in those things that will outlast you. All right, come on. On the History Channel, there was a documentary and there was a group of marine biologists uh, that reported that great white sharks in their natural habitat, they had a potential of reaching 3,500 pounds and they can reach up to 20 feet in length. That's the biggest that have ever been recorded. So here's the interesting thing about what they discovered during their study. They discovered that what happened when a great white shark uh, was raised from a baby in a small aquarium. What they discovered was very mind-blowing. Don't miss this. They discovered that even though a great white shark has the God-given capacity to grow up to 20 feet in length and weigh up to 3,500 pounds, when confined to a small aquarium, it will only reach 12 to 15 wow. inches in length and only weigh up to 15 wow. to 20 pounds. They discovered that even though it would not have reached full chronological maturity as far as age is concerned, it would be well short of reaching its full potential otherwise. Amen. So, so, so what are you saying about the world? If you don't get anything else, understand this. The shark was a, a prisoner of his own mind and his own perception. Come on now. So my question to the young people is, who are you? Well, 
Where are you going in life? How are you going to get there? Do you have a plan? See, young people, what you have to realize is that you have to be aware of those people you call your friends. You have to be aware of those people that you have in your cliques. But most important, you have to be aware of those who are in your support system. Because, see, what they'll try to do is that they'll try to get you away from your walk uh, with God. They'll try to uh, steer you away from your faith. They'll try to judge you based on what you believe if it doesn't come in line with what they believe. Right. All right. See, young people, what you have to understand is that once you get to a certain level, there's going to be some people that's going to try to bring you down. Josh, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Josh, come in. Jeremiah, I'm sorry. Jeremiah, come in, come in, come in, come on. Come on, stand up here for me. If Jeremiah is at the top of his level, Jeremiah is at the top of his level. Jeremiah know what dream he's trying to achieve. But Jeremiah, he has some friends that's at the bottom, that's below him as far as level-wise. Well, Young people, what you have to understand is that it's easier for somebody to bring you down versus them trying to bring you up to where you at. See, you have to understand that when you're trying to reach a certain level, there's going to be some people you got to leave behind. Yes. See, when you get to a certain yes. level, yes. God is going to take care of everything for you. Because see, what he's already yes. doing is that he's taking care of that for you behind the scenes. Yes. All right. See, what we don't understand is that while we've been sleeping, we've been slumbering, we've been out here working hard, God has been releasing some people behind the yes. scenes for us. Yes. See, we realize that we may be losing friends or we may be losing relatives because of something we said or something we did. Now it's because God already know that those people don't have no type of purpose in your life. So while you out doing your thing and he's trying to bless you, he's also helping you behind the scenes to get those people out of the way. Right? Young people, the most difficult thing that you're going to face in life is what I call a turtle crossing. It's a turtle crossing. These young ladies, they've been waiting for this ever since Wednesday night, bro. Around I already tell you, we're going to be in Brother Butler's term. Y'all come on, where my turtles at? What a turtle. Oh, Lord, one turtle had to go to the restaurant. Oh, DA Lane back here. Uh, uh, sorry, come down. Come down. Understand this, young people. I, I like analogies, so y'all stand right here. Okay, all right. She got to be the middle turtle. She, she know her place. Don't throw her off. A turtle crossing is you ever ride through uh, if you go like towards the beach somewhere y'all follow me a turtle crossing is turtles who are walking very slow you know turtles don't move fast so what they're doing is that they're, they're moving slow because they're following the leader That's right. and so what turtles have a tendency of they just walk across the street not knowing what's on the other side of the road All right, stop. but once they get once they get to this yellow line, then that's when these cars start coming at 70 miles per hour. So now these turtles, they have to make a decision because these cars is, is peer pressure, okay? These, these cars are peer pressure. It's coming at them real fast, y'all. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? Now, young people are dealing with a lot nowadays. It's not like it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. So now our young people are dealing with peer pressure. And that peer pressure is represented by the cars. So now they're going 70 miles per hour. So now these little turtles, they're trying to make a decision whether they're going to cross the road. You have this one who's looking around, not knowing what to do. And then you have this one who's looking back, but they see that they want to get back home, but they're too far away from home. I hope y'all didn't miss that. See, what we have to understand is that our young people, y'all go ahead, y'all go ahead and sit down. Our young people are dealing with things that we are afraid to touch in the church. Amen. See, we, we are afraid to mention certain things in the church because we think that if we mention it in the church, we're going to put it in the minds of our young people. But what you have to realize is that it's already in the minds of the young people. And what you have to realize is that if we want to teach them in the church, best believe they will learn it out there. And it's going to be at that time you want to call Brother Taylor, you want to call Brother Butler. Hey, can you pray for my son because he ain't got locked up? Can you, can you speak on his behalf because he ain't got locked up? Well, when we were trying to do that yeah, for you, you yeah. kind of fought against yeah, it because yeah. you didn't want that to be in their mind. That's it. Come on. 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 So once they get to a certain point in their life, 
God already know what the plan he has for us. Amen. He, he verified that in Jeremiah 29, 11. But sometimes we want to lean to our own Understood. understanding. That's right. See, we ask God to <laughs> we ask God to bless us with a Boaz. Uh -oh, come on, and when he bless us with that Boaz, we don't want with what God sent us, so we're gonna settle for the we gonna settle for the other one over here. So what we have to do with our young people is that first thing we need to do, parents, we cannot live our dream through our young people. Yeah, that's right. that's right. See, we already had our opportunity yeah, yeah. to be what it is that we wanted to be. Yeah. We had our opportunity to do what it is. And don't get me wrong, whatever it is, you can still do whatever it is you want to do. But a lot of times, we want to live our dream through our young people. Right. We want to raise our sons up to be that football player that yeah. we never uh, uh, was. And, and now he has no desire, no passion to play football because we have pushed that dream through him. And so what God is trying to tell us is that he has a dream for us. Yeah. See, we have to understand that once we follow our dreams, we must, we, we, once we have a dream, we must follow that dream. And we must just do it because we have to realize that together, all of us is going to come up. All of us That's is going right. to rise. Yeah. See, so many times we, we, we get up to a certain level and we have those same friends that are still trying to pull us down to their level because we, 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 they're really not our friends, young people. And so what you have to understand is that you all are in a situation to where you control your life. Yes. Y'all what? Sixth grade, seventh grade? You have really no worries in the world. You ain't got to pay no bills. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You ain't got to go to nobody's job. Teacher, well, no, teacher. You ain't really got to deal with all this other stuff in the world. All you got to do is just go to school. Yes. Make good grades. Yes. Do what your parents ask you to do. Yes. And that's pretty much it. So you're in a position to where you have to start thinking, what is it that I want to be in life? Yes. To the season members. Well... You, you've been discouraged long enough. You done sat long enough. You done been quiet long enough. You done been in a I can't do it sorority long enough. You done been in a, it would never happen to me fraternity long enough. You, you done been in I'm too old LLC long enough. It's time for me to get in God's business now and let God take and lead you to where he want you to go. Again, this was a message for our young people. And if it's anything else, if it's nothing else that you all remember, you all have to remember that if you don't have nobody else, it's Jesus yeah. who you always have. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We have to encourage these young people. Y'all yeah. yeah. stand up. Y'all stand up. Really. Yeah. Stand up. Stand up. Come 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 up. They are taught that the only way they're going to get something is that they got to throw a football or shoot a basketball. Right. Right. That, that's, that's, what, that's what us African Americans, we, we put in our young people. Yeah. Some of them, they even, the only thing that they know is the only way they can be something is they got to go out and push this for dad and push this for mommy. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. But I just need one person who can be with me, who can stand behind these kids and just say, you know what? I got your back. Whatever you need, I'm there for you. You don't have to feel alone. Everything you're going through, I done been through. The peer pressure that you're going through, I done been there. That drink that that person tried to offer you, I done been there. See, see we don't want to be real That's it. with our young people. That's it. Because we're so afraid that we might put off this image. But I'm going to be honest with you, working in youth ministry, the only way you're going to connect to these kids That's right. is that you got to be real. That's right. That's right. They don't want to hear what you should right. not do. Right. Not only that, but they need to hear what you done been through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I done been through <laughs> done tried the weed before. Yeah. I done been through trying to drink it before. I done been through skipping school before. I done been through at JSO before. I know how it is to go through that. Yeah. And it's just getting worse and worse yeah. Yeah. every day. Yeah. Yeah. And until we take a stand, gotta start here at Northbound. Yeah. Until we take, we, we said start at the house, and, and it may do. It, you know, everybody has their differences on where to start. My responsibility is here at this church. Yeah. 
with these That's young right. people. Amen. Because not everybody has a home. That's right. Y'all right. missed that. That's right. All right. That's right. Everybody has a house, but not everybody has a home. That's right. And so in order for us to save these young people, we have to meet them where That's they're right. at. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. We, we get so caught up. We get so caught up as, 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 as youth directors, as youth pastors, youth ministers. People ask, well, why is it that you have to do this and this for the young people? Why we got to have the bounce houses? Why we got to have the DJ? Because... <laughs> We are living in a world to where these kids, and I'm not saying these kids, but we are living in a world where this generation don't want to come to know Jesus. That's right. So then what we have to do, we have to take Jesus to them. That's right. We got to meet them on their turf. See, we can't always expect for them to come here because a lot of parents don't even come. That's right. When I was born in youth ministry at Westside, a lot of Brother Robson, Brother Murray can tell you a lot of Kids that was in the youth ministry, parents weren't even numbers at the church. Right. That's right. But what we did is that we had programs that had these kids to come to church. Yeah. Uh, they was excited to come to church. That's and right. now the parents yeah. were going, hold on, why are my child so excited to go to this church? And once we got the parents in the door, That's the right. rest was history. That's That's right. Right. So we, we, we have to meet our young people where they at because those of us who came up in the church, yeah. And who know Jesus for all our life. We made the decision that we're going to give our kids a choice to come to church. And Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I ain't expecting to get too many amen. Come on. Come on. We, 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 are, we are in a world to where our kids have a choice if they want to come to church or not. But they don't have a choice if they're going to go play football or go That's children. Right. That's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. We just talk about it. We need to pick what's important That's right. in life. That's right. So until we are ready to meet our young people yeah. where they get. Mm -hmm. And until the second thing is we have to build a relationship with them. That's yeah. it. That's right. That's right. Just because you see these kids every Sunday, you don't have the right to go tell them what they're doing wrong. Sure come, on, come on, come say on, it. Say I don't know what you're on that. It. It's the way you still have to respect That's right. them. Yeah. Yeah. Just because they're an adult and you're a child, you still don't have the right to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's right. right. And then at the right. same time, respect these adults that yeah. you have. So you see how that works? It's a two-way street. Yeah. Yeah. We both yeah. got to be willing to meet each other yes. where they at. Yes. Oh, this one even in my list. I was supposed to be doing 20 minutes ago. Y'all know how to preach a lot. 15 minutes, how you two scriptures? I'm out of here. <laughs> but no, seriously, seriously. It's good. Seriously. It's good. Need it. seriously. Yeah. Good. These young people are crying for help. Yeah. And more. And more. That's true. Uh, brother, brother Taylor, what was a young man named in, in, in New York? Um, the brother in Christ that they got shot down by the police officer. Dallas. 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 Both of them. I know he's not a youth, but he was a young guy, y'all. That's just an example to show you what type of world we are living in. Yeah. I'm not even going to talk on that, but y'all got to pray for that family. Yeah. That's right. But pray for our young people. Yes, Lord. That's right. Pray for our young people. You know, the thing that will make these young people happy is to see their parents standing behind them right now, giving them a hug, letting them know, I love you. I got you. A lot of times they go through a whole day and may not hear those words. That's right. I can't be your parent. I'm not trying to step in your parents' place. That's right. But I just need one parent to come up here and who can just say, you know what? I love you. That's right. Whatever you need, I'm here That's for right. you. Amen. You understand? Even if you even if your child is not up here, if you have a love for young people and you are ready to help your bound to take youth ministry to a whole nother level, I need you up here. These young people need to know that they have a church home who loves them. They need to know that they have adults who love them, who want to help them to get right, and who, who's just not concerned about just fussing at them when something goes wrong. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times we, a lot of times we don't want to get involved. We don't want to get involved in youth ministry until we hear that one of our kids has done something wrong. It's not until he go to jail that we want to start talking about him when we knew he was out here robbing people. It's not until she gets pregnant. And she has that baby that we want to start talking about her when we knew she was out here having sex. Well, what were you doing before? 
That's how I stand to our feet.